This is a nice uh, additional demonstration that you can do once you've got the idea of the old jumping wire between the jaws and the magnet. I've got a signal generator, which at the moment is set up just to uh, uh, produce a sine wave at a frequency of 1 hertz. So that's producing an alternating current through into the aluminium foil, which is between the jaws of the magnet. And as the current goes one way, then the other, one way, then the other, the aluminium foil wants to jump one way, then the other, one way, then the other. And you can use your old Fleming's left hand rule to describe that. Now, that going slowly is nice, that going one way, then the other is nice, rather than the jumping wire, which just has to jump one way and stay that way. Um, it's nicer though because you can speed it up a little bit and make it go a bit crazy, or really crazy, and eventually it gets to the point where it's vibrating so fast you can't see it, but you start being able to hear it. And at this point, it's better to tighten it a little bit, carefully, because the foil's quite delicate, and it will actually now produce sound, because it's vibrating in response to an alternating current. That's basically what loudspeakers do. So in a sense, it's a loudspeaker. In fact, this isn't a new invention. Uh, these are called ribbon tweeters, or this is the basis of something called a ribbon tweeter, and that's been used in loudspeakers for decades. You can also, though, because that's never a terribly interesting sound, there's nothing stopping you than connecting it to your iPod and then playing music through it, because this won't distinguish between a sine wave coming from a signal generator and actual music. It will still vibrate. And that sound's just coming from that ribbon? Yep, it really is. And if you need proof, if I just disconnect one of these crocodile clips, it just stops. That's very cool. And then later on you can actually see it start to vibrate. A nice thing once it gets going on a song properly like this is that you can see that it copes really quite well with the high frequencies but the bass it actually copes very badly with and that's another reason why this design is used as a ribbon tweeter which is the name for a high frequency specialised loudspeaker as opposed to being used in anything full range. So really nice for high frequencies, not very good for bass. <laughs> 